So it's a very strange history. To me, that's what makes the Grand the Great. And that's what's so amazing that Manandia saw this. And Manandia wrote this book using only Greek and Roman sources. Because there were no Armenian sources. Remember, there was no Armenian language until 405 AD. So everything that's written, Tikran was 500 years almost before we even got our alphabet. So there couldn't have been any Armenian sources. All the sources were either Greek, Aramaic, or Latin. And some Pahlavi sources which the Arabs mostly destroyed when they came to Iran. We don't have Armenia. The only Armenian source we have is much later. Moses Horonazi writes a little bit about Tigran, but that's, that's already 500 years later. A few lines here and there. You know, we don't have. So the amazing stuff that Manandian went to all the sources, the Greek, the Roman, etc., and he has taken, and he hasn't changed anything. He did not write like a flag-waving Armenian nationalist. No, when you read it, it's very, very unbiased. Showing exactly what the Greek historians are saying, what the Roman historians are saying, and how, why Tigran is great. The book was published in 1940 in Armenian, 100 copies only, because it was at the time of the bad time, 1940. It was for the academics. And then a year later, a Russian translation appeared in 400 copies, all of them not available, long time ago. A few years, about 30 years ago, a modern Armenian version, collection of Manandian's work in a few volumes, saw the light, also now impossible. So one of the reasons I translated this is because my students constantly, Richard and I, when we teach Armenian history, we always have to talk about Rome coming in, Alexander the Great, the Seleucids, the Parthians, the invasions. We could not explain it very well. We neither had the maps, nor we had a book in English to give to our students. Most of the students today, you can't blame them, they can't read all the languages. There are a few of us who luckily studied them. The new generation, you can't blame them for not studying these kind of things. I mean, James Russell knows all the languages. A few of us know. But you have to realize, first, there are no jobs. Now, I'm not pushing for a job. I'm retiring. But I'm trying to explain to you why it's so difficult to attract young Armenian boys, women, men, etc., into the field. First, it takes 12, 13 years, sometimes 40 years to get the damn PhD. Second, when you get it, there are no jobs. Third, when you get a job, they give you forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Garbage collectors make that. Now everybody is laughing, but that's the problem. And then we scream by saying, "Oh, there are not enough army." Well, of course, there are not enough army scholars. Regardless of how much we hated the Soviet period, the Soviet Armenia, regardless how much you didn't like it, one good thing about Soviet Armenia was. All professors had fantastic salaries, all had jobs. Always. There was no such thing. And you couldn't find a book. Books would sell out the day they were brought out. People read. Taxi drivers, bus drivers, everybody had a library. They read. Okay? That was the good part. Yes, they had to put in the introduction Marx, Engels, Lenin, but everybody knew that was in the introduction. They put those, you know, those first few pages. The great socialist revolution, pa 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 pa. A few words were put in, but the rest of the book was fine. In fact, in the old days when I went to the Soviet Armenia, they would tell me, George, this is a good book. All you have to do is, you see the first two pages? Tear it out. <laughs> when you go home, they knew. This is, this is, without this, it couldn't be published. Tear it out. And then the rest is fine. Manandian also at the beginning, one page at the beginning, I don't know if he wrote it, it was written later, talks about the great suffering of the peasants and the workers under the feudal imperialistic, you know, this big, big word. The rest of the book is completely clean. None of the stuff is there. So I hope I explained why Bikran the Great is great. Not because he was a Christian Armenian with one wife and prayed in church. There were no churches. He did not speak Armenian very well. He was a man of his time. 
He was an emperor of his time, a king of kings. He had a harem, he had some slaves, he executed people, he was a strong king. He had to be. He was an emperor. So were all the other emperors of that time. Well, why, can't, why, why do we have to make him suddenly something that he was not? Everybody else was like that at the time. That's what it took to become an emperor, unfortunately. Thank you.